Hey everybody and welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 how-to video. Today we're going to take a look at everything you need to know in order to become a cotton farmer. Now cotton is one of those hybrid crops. That's what I'm referring it to. Because we can plant cotton with a traditional planter. But we have to have very specialized harvesting equipment and transport equipment to handle our cotton modules or bales. Now we have specialty crops in farm sim like grapes and olives that require very specific equipment to care for the crop and harvest the crop. Specialty crops like potatoes and poplar that require specialty planters as well as harvesters. And then we have cotton, which again, as I said, is kind of a, a hybrid crop. So let's take a look at the things we need in order to become a cotton farmer. So we go to the shop. Under vehicles, we have two self-propelled cotton harvesters. We have the Case Module Express 635. This will make square modules, often referred to as square cotton bales. Now a square cotton module will have a capacity of 20,000 liters. So you're going to need to do a very big field when you start working with cotton. You're not going to want to use small fields of cotton because you're probably not going to get a whole lot. And you may or may not be able to actually take your module out of your harvester if it is not big enough. Now we move on to the John Deere 6P690. This is a round cotton baler and it will produce, as I said, round cotton bales. And typically the capacity of these is going to be 10,000 liters. So half the capacity of the big case module harvester. But this one is $847,000. So a cool half million for the case and over three quarters of a million for the John Deere cotton harvester. Now, as far as transporting your cotton bales, under tools and then cotton technology, there are some very specific equipment that you're going to use to transport cotton. We have a cotton wheelie grab. This is a three point hitch attachment that will help you transport one round bale of cotton. If we take a look at the combination screen for this particular implement, you're going to see that it is recommended that we have a big front weight. And then, then we have some rather large tractors are suggested to be used with this particular implement because a 10,000 liter round cotton bale is going to have some weight to it. As far as the square cotton modules, we have the Lizard Module 4 trailer. This is for the transport of one cotton module. And then we have the Module X Semi. This is designed to transport two cotton modules at once. Back to the round baler, we have a McCormick auto loading trailer here that will transport three round bales, very similar to the Anderson bale trailers that we have also seen in game. And that is, for the most part, what you need to know in order to harvest and transport your cotton. As I said, you cannot use a traditional seeder to put cotton in the ground. You will be able to use a traditional planter though. Anything from the Falcon 3 that is just three meter working with all the way up the game planter stack to the Kinsey 4905, which is what we're gonna be using to put cotton into the ground. Now we are over here on Elm Creek and we're gonna use field 33, which I have to say is probably the smallest field I would recommend you planting cotton in because again, it's gonna take a lot of cotton to make a 20,000 liter module. And it's gonna take a lot of cotton to make 10,000 liter round bales. So I have already prepared this field. So this field has been plowed. It has been cultivated. It has been de-stoned. It has been limed. It has been fertilized twice. We also mulched the previous crop here. So we have basically the best 
possible soil we could have in order to put our cotton into the ground. So let's go ahead and see what's involved in planting our cotton. We're gonna unfold and we're gonna change our seed with the Y button over to cotton. And just for convenience sake, I'm just gonna go ahead and hire a helper. And now you can see that we have planted our cotton. We're gonna need to come through here with a roller and roll the cotton field to get our extra 2% bonus yield. We'll get up to plus 100% yield bonus. And then we're also gonna to need to come through here with a traditional weeder to de-weed our cotton field. So I'm gonna go ahead and let the helper finish planting out this field and then we'll go ahead and roll and weed the cotton. I'll come back once we have our first growth and we'll kind of march through how long it's gonna to take to grow our cotton. Now I am using the game with seasonal growth turned off. That's simply so that we can get these products or get these crops growing and see how that process all works without having to worry with the seasonal growth calendar. If you are playing with the seasonal growth calendar and turned on, let's go ahead and see when you will be able to plant and harvest your cotton. So with seasonal growth turned on, cotton is gonna be able to be planted in March and February. And then we can expect cotton to be ready to harvest in October or November. As expected, we are now one month Post planting, we have our first emergence of our cotton crop. Three months post planting, we've moved into our second stage of crop growth. At six months, we have another visual change in our crop. We don't quite yet have the white cotton that we're used to seeing but we do appear to have some sort of flower coming up on our cotton and at eight months we now have our crop of cotton ready to harvest so i think the first thing we will use is possibly the round baler the John Deere round baler. Let's go ahead and jump in that one. We'll take a little look at some of the controls that are available to us in the round baler. So the John Deere round baler is a little unique in how it works. We have to unfold the harvester, which really kind of folds it, if you ask me. And now it is a giant round baler, in essence. We have some other commands we can turn on and off. Auto drop with Z. So the fact that it says turn on auto drop means it's turned off. Turn off auto drop means it's turned on. Let's go ahead and come up here. Just for convenience sake, I'm going to hire a helper so that we don't have to worry about driving while we are taking a look at how the cotton harvester works. In essence, it's sort of a cotton picker and that the way this works is it extracts the cotton off the plant, but it leaves the plant behind. Cotton will not regrow. So cotton is not a plant that will, or a crop that is plant once and harvest multiple times. Cotton is a plant once, harvest once crop. So at this point, once we've harvested the entire field, we can come through here with a mulcher and mulch 
the dead cotton plant into the ground in order to start the process for the next crop. Now, something else that is very interesting about the round bale cotton harvester is that very similar to the Vicon and Cooverland fast baler is that it has a pre collection chamber, kind of a, 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 a pre compaction chamber. So we can see here cotton is flowing into this front chamber. Right now we have 60% full of that front chamber. I'm going to come back to you once we are nearly 100% on that front chamber. And you're going to see that we are going to basically move the cotton from the front chamber to the rear chamber because this harvester allows us to basically continuously harvest cotton and produce round bales at the same time. All right, so here we are at 98%, 99, 100%. The cotton is flowing out of the pre-chamber and basically now into the round baling area. And we are now filling up the pre-chamber again. So one fourth of the bale is always gonna be in the round bale chamber, or should I say the pre-chamber, sorry. And then after it gets up to about 2,500 liters, it's gonna move it back to the round baling chamber. And this is what allows it to operate as a continuous harvester. So when we get 10,000 liters in the round bale chamber, it's going to finish out the bale. But unlike a traditional round baler, we don't have to stop and wait for that. We can continue on because the pre-chamber that holds 2,500 liters worth of product is basically collecting the cotton as it comes into the harvester. We also have, and we're gonna demonstrate this in a little bit, on the back, the ability to collect or hold a round bale on the back of the harvester. So in essence, we can drop two bales at once and basically make it so we're driving over the field less. So let's go ahead and come back once we are ready to produce our first round cotton bale. So we are finally coming up on making our very first round bale. I'm going to dismiss the helper. It's because I want to have full control now over the round bale. So we have opted to leave the round bale on the rear deck and we can choose to drop this now off the edge of the field if we want or I could leave this bale on the harvester and continue to harvest and then if I wanted to right before I drop the second bale or right before we get done making our second bale I could drop this bale onto the ground. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and drop this here, but that's the general principle, is you can turn off auto drop, and then with Y, I'm going to unload this. Now you can see how heavy that bale was, by how much the baler kind of moved with respect to its weight. So like I said, you can, you can run it so it auto drops in the field. You can run it so that you disable auto drop and you can basically have a bale on the back tray, a bale being made, and then drop both bales at one spot. So it's a bit less running around. I like to do it to where I can drop the bale off the field because while the harvester here is not 
causing crop destruction. If I go and get a regular tractor here, and let's demonstrate while we're at it. The big bale grab. We do have crop destruction turned on. So the act of driving into the field typically it's very interesting. So yeah, I just checked to see if crop destruction was on. It is indeed on. It seems like this is interesting. Seems like they have made it. So cotton does not uh, respond to crop destruction. That is definitely something that is new from Farm Sim 19. I want to check one thing. I want to drive over a unharvested part of this field and see if we lose crop. Yep, yeah, see, those plants vanished, so crop destruction is on, but you can drive all you want into the harvested crop and it doesn't do anything. All right, back to what we're demonstrating here. So this bale grab, what we do is we wanna lower it left click and left and right to open and we'll back and then we will collect our bale and you can see how much that the tractor changes in weight here and we can now transport this round bale singularly to whatever destination we want to. I'm gonna put it down here on the other end of the field. So then I can demonstrate for you the round bale trailer once we have a second round bale. So I'll be back with you once we get the rest of this field harvested with the round baler. All right, just wanted to show you here the concept of having a bale on the back and then basically dropping two bales at the same time. See, we are about to finish out the bale that's in the chamber. So we now have a bale. It's going to auto drop that bale. I'm going to hit Y. And then I'm going to drop this bale right beside it. And then we're going to continue on. Now we are effectively done the field at this point. And I have to say one of the maybe detriments to this particular baler is we're not going to have the option of unloading a partial bale. We're going to have to basically keep whatever cotton is in the baler at this point now that the field is done for our next harvest. We do have the ability with the module baler of unloading a partial bale. Uh, what I I'm not 100% on is basically how partial that bale can be. I have a feeling that it requires the bale to be at a certain level before we can unload it. But we're going to take a look at that here in a little bit. Now, as a result of having cotton in our harvester, 
we can't unfold it. So we are now basically stuck with our harvester in this configuration, which means that it may not fit inside of our building because it's now taller because we can't empty the harvester. Let's go ahead and demonstrate now our round bale collector for the round bales. We got 30,000 liters of cotton off of field 33. So we're going to put this trailer in operating position. And we're going to pull up to the bale. It's going to grab it, pick it and place it on here. And then the conveyor belt is going to move it down one position. Now I wanted to see if this trailer also does not do destruction. Okay. This trailer definitely did cause crop destruction in FS19. And then it picks it up, slides it over. Both of those bales slide down automatically. And there we go. Now we have three bales loaded on our round bale bale trailer. Let's fold this up. And I want to Take this up to the spinnery because the spinnery has a, well, I'm going to say the spinnery has a deep, dark little secret because it is a viable production point slash sell point. We need to be cognizant of how these work in farm sim 22. so let's get up here and we'll talk a little bit about this as we are showing off the spinnery now here on elm creek we do have two cell points for cotton one is here at the spinnery and then the other is over at, I believe it's Johnson's Farmer's Market. Let's just go ahead and look here. So if we come down here to our cotton, we have Johnson's Farmer's Market, which is actually the better price at the moment, or the spinnery. But the spinnery is also a viable production area. Remember, we have 30,000 liters of cotton. So we're gonna hit wide unload. And we're gonna drop our bale in here. And you can see we got a fair bit of money for our cotton bales, but one bale remains. And thus, the secret is exposed. So we got $96,000. Now we are on easy economy, okay? So this setup is on easy economy. But here's the deep dark secret for production points that are viable. And that is that they have a maximum input capacity. So we can buy this spinnery like this. And now that we have bought the spinnery, take a look in side. So we are nearly full at 30,000 liters. So if we had another harvest, if we had another field about the same size as field 33, we would try to bring another 30,000 liters of cotton down here. We wouldn't be able to put 
all of the cotton in here because it's processing and it's processing 1400 sorry it's processing 576 cycles per month and it's going to use five cottons units per cycle so how much cotton is it going to use per month so quick little math you're going to go through 2880 units of cotton per month that's it we have right now we have 10 months worth of cotton unloaded here at the spinnery we just learned that it's eight months to do one cotton harvest so in essence we now have that one field will be able to keep our spinnery in cotton year round and i think over time we will be slowly adding more cotton to the spinnery than the spinnery is able to process so at some point we're going to max that out and just have a bunch of cotton left over which is fine because at that point we would sell it at another sell point right so that is something to be aware of with respect to cotton is if the spinnery is your only sell point on the map well you're gonna maybe run into issues if you are big into cotton production because at some point you may max out your spinnering and at that point the only way to sell cotton would be to find a placeable cotton buy point now i'm gonna go ahead and revert a save so that we have our cotton field once again ready to harvest and now we'll demonstrate the use of the case ih module harvester and then the module trailers and then we'll wrap up and talk a little bit about what you do with your cotton or your wool after you've taken it to the spinnery after it has produced fabric, what happens after that? So just like the John Deere harvester that we just took a look at, the Case IH harvester needs to unfold and it expands itself like that. And now we are ready for business. We also have the ability to turn on and off automatic drop also just like the John Deere harvester the case harvester is more of a cotton picker than a cotton harvester I guess from the stance that it leaves the cotton plant behind so you can run over here with a mulcher after harvest and mulch the dead cotton plant back into the ground for again the next harvesting and crop cycle and let's take a look at how kind of the case ih harvester works so cotton is blown into this compaction chamber and we will see it from time to time just like that it will squeeze down then it will expand back up and this is going to make a 20,000 liter bale now we already know from our John Deere harvesting of this field we're going to get just over 30,000 liters of cotton off of this field so basically one and a half modules is what we're going to expect to get as far as a total yield so i'm going to go ahead and let this guy run and we'll come back right about the point where we are ready to drop off our first 20,000 liter cotton module 
and we are coming up on 20,000 liters. That would be our first module. You can see how much of the field we've had to harvest and why I said you really don't want to put cotton in a field much smaller than field 33 is. So there we are. We are now at one full cotton module. We can't put any more in there at this point in time. So we need to Y to unload. See the whole thing tips up, ramp opens up, and then the module just slides out. And then we hit Y again to fold everything back up. And off we go. Now, I'm sure some might, some might reference that, well, I want to use the round baler because I don't have to stop. Well, remember, this is... 20,000 liters, so it's two round bales worth of product. And as such, if you had left a round bale on the back of the harvester and then wanted to drop both round bales off at once, you have to stop, unload both. If you continuously harvest, then you just got to run around the field twice as much in order to get your product. So... Is it really a time savings? Uh, it's hard to tell. So let's go ahead and take a look here at our module trailer, the single module variant. And then when we are done the field, we'll have a partial module that we can demonstrate the semi trailer with. You want to be square on the module before you put it into operating position. B. You see it then grabs the module and pulls it on up. B to go into transport position. At this point, we are now ready to transport this module to where we want to take it either to some place to centrally store it or to a cell point to the spinnery or in our case I'm just going to drop it right here to unload it we're going to hit B then we're going to hit Y and it's just going to drop it just like the uh, harvester did. And that is how you use the little four module, single module trailer. So we'll say that one thing that, in my opinion, puts the module harvester over and above the John Deere is that now I have a partial bale, just 55%, 11 thousand liters I can actually unload this as we saw earlier I had a partial bale in the John Deere I couldn't unload it maybe because it was in the pre compaction chamber maybe because it wasn't a full bale and you can't partially unload a round bale but I can for sure partially unload a cotton module let me just go ahead and do that right here. So we're going to hit Y to unload partial bale. I checked I was able to do this even when the bale was at about 6,000 liters. So under 50%. Now visually, the bale looks the same as it does with a full bale. But if you walk up to it, you'll be able to clearly see that it is only partially there. And as a result of being able to unload a partial bale, we can now fold this back up when we are done. So 
So a full cotton module is 20,000 liters or four tons. And our partial module, as you can see, is 11,098 liters. It's still coming up as four tons. That's something that I saw over at the spinnery when we had the round bale. A round cotton bale is 10,000 liters and two tons. But when we had that partial bale at the spinnery, it still said it had a mass of two tons. So let's go ahead and demonstrate now the semi variant of the module trailer, which holds up to two modules. And then we will see this basically pull the bale on up. So let's talk a little bit more now about what we do with the module once it is loaded. So by default, we do not have any way of storing these other than just having them sit outside or maybe if we have a large shed that we could unload the modules under, we could do that. But it's not like we can put this in any sort of silo or any other storage mechanism like that. We know we can sell these at a traditional sell point if we should so wish. And we also know that we can take these to the spinnery and either sell them at the spinnery if we do not own it, or if we own the spinnery, we can process the cotton into fabric. Now let's take a look at some of that information and really see if there is any sort of benefit in processing our cotton to fabric and then later fabric to clothing. So I do have this set to easy, this test game save. You can see the Johnson Farmer's Market, $3,693 for a thousand liters of cotton, $3,280 here at the spinnery. Now, if you own the spinnery, the spinnery will take our cotton or wool and convert it to fabric. That conversion is going to increase the value to 8,262 per thousand liters. And then if we further process our fabric into clothing, we are at $24,387 per thousand liter. Again, this is on easy. What I'm gonna do and what I really would suggest anyone do is if you don't own the spinnery but you plan on owning it or you don't own the factory, that the production point is based on, I would suggest unloading your product to the sell point first, and then I would suggest, there we got $102,000 for our cut. Now, I'm gonna buy the spinnery for $60,000. I just made 40 grand because the cotton that we dropped off is still here, as you may or may not know. So there's the 31,000 liters of cotton that I just dropped off. Now I got paid $100,000. I bought the spinnery for $60,000. I'm still up $40,000. And I get 31,000 liters of cotton to now convert into fabric. Now the conversion rate is five units of cotton to three units of fabric. So we should get 18,663 liters of fabric, liters of fabric, right? Okay, 18,663 units, we'll do that. Units of fabric out of our 31,105 units of cotton. 
So if we then take a look here at our prices screen for fabric, so we have 8,262 times 18,000, we're going to get $148,000 from the cotton that we just dropped off after it's all been processed into fabric, assuming that we can get $8,262 or thereabout. Now, if we look at our cotton and we look at the best sell price and see what we can get, that is basically, let's say, $3,700 times 31,000 liters. That's $114,000 we can earn from our cotton if we sold it at Johnson's Farmer's Market today. So we can earn a, a decent amount of money by processing it then into fabric. But that's not where it ends because we can take that fabric and then take it down to the tailor and make even more money. But before we talk about that, we, we kind of have this, this kind of skeleton in the closet, the elephant in the room, if you will, related to cotton and the spinnery. And we've talked about this with the John Deere. And that is the cotton spinnery has about a 50,000 liter capacity for cotton. And once you fill that up, you can only add more cotton as it consumes cotton. And it does this even if you do not own the production facility. So you can only put 50,000 liters of cotton in in one fail swoop. And you'll see we have 576 cycles per month, and it's going to use five cotton units per cycle. So it's going to go through 2,880 units of cotton per month. It's going to then generate 1,728 units of fabric per month. Okay, so the 31,000 liters of cotton that we dropped off is going to take just over 10 and a half months to process into fabric. So this is a long, you know, if, if you're looking for a short payout, a quick turn payout, then buying the spinnery is not your best option. Selling at the spinnery is probably not gonna be your best option because of the fact that it does have that production speed limit to it. Selling it at a sell point that you cannot buy is going to be your best bet if you are running a high volume um, cotton farm. Now, something to note, once we have purchased the spinnery, there's no way of selling it back. So if you're on a map that only has one sell point for cotton, and that is the spinnery, I would definitely not buy the spinnery because at that point, you have no way of getting rid of your cotton because you purchased the only sell point and the only way to get rid of a factory once you've bought it is to destroy it. So let's look at production and let's look at the tailor shop. Cost $100,000. Now let's take a look at the tailor shop and its production. The tailor shop is going to take two units of fabric and it's going to convert it into one unit of clothing. It's going to run at 1,080 units or cycles per month. So to keep this tailor shop operational, we need to feed it 2,160 units of fabric per month so that it can generate 1,080 units of clothing per month. Now the spinnery produces three fabrics per cycle and it has 576 cycles per month. The spinnery operating at peak performance is only gonna generate 1,728 units of fabric per month. So it will not be able to keep a single tailor shop in fabric for that entire duration because the tailor shop is wanting fabric faster than a single spinnery is able to 
produce fabric. Now, the good thing is, it means you're not going to have an excess of fabric building up. The bad news is, you're not going to get 1,080 units of clothing per month. But, if you look at this, so we have five units of cotton goes in, it makes three units of fabric. And then we have two units of fabric making one unit of clothing. We're still very much in the profit when you look at the difference between $3,600 for a thousand liters of cotton at the Johnson's Farmer's Market and clothing at 24,380 per thousand liters. All right, so let's think about it this way. And I'm not, I'm not the best for off the cuff math so i think i have this set up right five units of cotton makes three units of fabric we've said this right two units of fabric makes one unit of clothing so in essence a unit of clothing is two units of fabric and therefore five units of cotton makes one and a half units of clothing Right? So if we take a look at that, then we see that basically a third, 0.3 of our cotton will ultimately become clothing. So a third. So if we put 31,000 liters of cotton in, we can expect to get 9,300 liters of clothing out once it's gone through the spinnery and once it's going through the clothing factory, or the tailor shop. So if we take a look at 9,300, or basically 9,000 times, or nine times 24,379, our 31,000 liters of cotton is going to net us $219,000. Now it's going to take us over 10 and a half months to realize this profit as the spinnery slowly consumes the cotton that we put in. And then as the tailor slowly consumes the fabric that it's getting in. But to kind of summarize again, 31,000 liters of cotton, if we sold it direct, was $114,700. If we process it into fabric, we can sell it for $148,716. If we then later process that fabric into clothing, we should be able to get $219,420 when it's all said and done. But we have had to buy a tailor shop. And the tailor shop costs us $100,000. So there is a bit of an investment. But over the course of probably two years, maybe three years, we're going to be able to reap that back. Now let's just go ahead and fast forward one month and see what we get generated as far as our fabric, then being moved over here to our tailor shop, and then ultimately making our clothing. So in practice, it seems that maybe we're not going to get the outputs that we were expecting to get because of the fact that we can't keep the tailor shop fully fed with one spinnery. If we bought a second spinnery and spread our, our yield out over the two spinneries, then I think we could distribute and basically keep one tailor shop operational. You can see we are down to 29,694 liters of cotton. We have no fabric stored because we're distributing it automatically. Clothing, he has 17 units of fabric stored and he's only made 526 units of clothes over that one month period. So let's go back one more month and we should have hopefully a pallet of clothing. So again, after another month, you see we're down to 28,000. 246 units of cotton. We have no fabric. 
Incoming fabric, we have 17 in our tailor shop and we have 74 clothing stored because we do now have a pallet of clothing here that we can take to the clothing sell point and collect our profits. So yeah, it seems like if you wanna keep your tailor shop running to peak efficiency, you really need to have two spinneries. And if that's buying the spinnery that is available in the map or placing a spinnery of your own or placing two spinneries of your own, then I would say go ahead and do that because these spinneries will be able to keep a single tailor shop fed with fabric and then a little excess that you can skim off and basically sell even more and make even more profits from. So guys, I hope that is useful and helpful. I know we talked a lot about a lot of things here, but I really thought it was useful to cover the, infu the full economic cycle that cotton brings you from planting cotton, caring for it once it's in the ground, harvesting it, the different ways you can harvest it, the different ways you can transport it, and basically now the decisions that one needs to make with respect to do I sell cotton? Do I buy the spinnery and make fabric? Do I sell the fabric? Or do I take it to its final destination and put down a tailor shop or buy a tailor shop if it's on the map and create clothing. Let me know in the comments, what do you think and what is your favorite way of well, getting rid of your cotton? Until next time, happy farming.